Okay, so we analyzed 23 years of satellite data, in particular altimeter data, uh, and, and that is a long record over the ice shelves. That's something that we didn't have before. That, that would be the, the, the innovation with this work. So by looking at how the height of the ice shelves in West Antarctica behave over 23 years continuously for uh, our records, they sample every three months, more or less. So we can analyze how these, the height of the ice shelves actually fluctuate. In our previous work, we focused more on, on the trends. In this work, we actually remove the trends of the ice shelf and we're more interested on this interannual variability of ice shelf height. Now, one of, one of the main findings of, of our study then is that we saw a very clear link between variability in the tropical Pacific Ocean, that is the El Nino Southern Oscillation, and variability at interannual time scales of ice shelf height in, in West Antarctica. That, that would be the, the, the main finding. El Nino has an effect on local environmental conditions, right? So in particular, it modifies the local pressure field in, in the, along the Amundsen Sea and Bellinghausen Seas in, in West Antarctica. So there is there a permanent uh, pressure feature, pressure anomaly feature called the Amundsen Sea Low. So when that pressure feature gets, it's, it's, an, it's a pressure anomaly, it gets deeper or shallower depending on El Nino or, or La Nina years. And that changes in the local pressure field, changes uh, the, the wind patterns. Now, the wind patterns is what governs then everything else here. Two main things. One is that winds, they get intensified or reduced during El Niños or La Niñas. And then you can change, you can promote more moisture fluxes coming from the ocean towards the continent or less. And that will end in an increase in snowfall or decrease in snowfall, depending if, if, the, if, the, if it is an El Niño year where snows, snowfall tends to increase, or La Niña year when snowfall, snowfall tends to decrease, okay? So during El Niño, we have increase in snowfall. That, that means that we have more mass being added on top of the ice shelf. Now that the same wind patterns also control how ocean, oceanic circulation locally. And, and, and in particular, it promotes uh, this, the upwelling of warm uh, uh, Antarctic deep water onto the continental shelf and pushes it underneath the ice shelf. That water is warmer than the water that lies close, closer to the surface. Therefore, promotes melting of the ice shelves at the base. So here we have a connection of tropical Pacific variability, the Niño and La Niña, changing local pressure fields changing local wind patterns, and the winds then promoting more snowfall, mass gain on top, but at the same time, more melting at the base of the ice shelf. So this is very interesting because you have these two opposite processes. So, and then the question that we had to, to answer is, which of these two processes actually win? Because the ice shelf turns out to be gaining mass and at the same time, losing mass. So we had an idea that El Nino might impact some of these ice shelves, and we had an idea that the impact would be uh, favoring, promoting uh, more melt. So mass should decrease during El Nino. And I was expecting to see as well, since I was measuring the height of this ice shelf, a decreasing height as an overall mass loss. Now, it, it turns out that as you add mass from top, you are adding snow, which is very fluffy, it's very low density, right? So the height actually can increase quite a lot. But the ocean melts ice from below, which is solid ice. It, 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 solid ice has a much, uh, uh, is much more dense than, than the mass that's being added on top. So one thing is looking at just what high is doing, and another thing is then taking into account the, dens the, the densities of the mass that has been added on top and the mass that is being removed by the ocean at, at the bottom. And it turns out that the ocean removes more mass than actually a snowfall is able to add on top. Just because the, the, these, these two uh, uh, mass, uh, mass changes have different densities. And the snow is very light.
Well, since we, we, we are looking at variability and short-term variability, internal variability, one thing that we could expect, and there are a few other works on that saying, well, if, if the temperature of our atmosphere keeps warming, as it is warming, we might have an increase in the frequencies of extreme El Niños, so we will have more El Niños, and they will be also more intense. That means that that very well can translate to an increase in the variability of the ice shelves. So since we saw mass of the ice shelf fluctuates, and, and that can be affected by fluctuations in El Niño, then in the future we should expect, expect a higher fluctuation, even you know, higher amplitude. And that, that tell us, well, that it, accounting for this effect at the short time uh, scales, so variability, not only the trend, variability of the ice shelf mass is very, certainly very important for projecting the, the, the future behavior of the ice shelves due, for example, to climate change.